Hey, I'm Nick Mack, a freelance illustrator from London, and I'm going to show you how I created this custom skate deck. Here it is naked. So what do you do with a naked board? You want to sand it down first. Nothing too overboard or strong in terms of level of sandpaper. It's just to smooth it out and ensure there's no varnish or wax of any kind on it that might repel the paint. It's unlikely, but it might, and it's good to remove the mites. I then get ready to prime it so that it's ready for painting. I tape up the holes so that it doesn't drip through and attach tin cans, but you can use anything you can that will keep it raised. This is just so that the edges don't touch any surface and it won't stick when the paint dries. Gesso time. It's always hard to know exactly how much you need with paint, but it's only a small amount, especially because I water it down too so that it's easier to apply and ensures that it's not too thick and clunky. After that's dried, I applied another coat, and you can do this multiple times if you want a very clean white background to start with, which is what I was going to do, but halfway through I actually decided on a different idea that involved spray paint, which wouldn't really have needed the gesso. So I took it outside. Indecisive artists say, what are they like? I'm giving the gesso a sand, and this is not because of the spray painting. Always sand your gesso layer, as it smooths it out and removes any ridges or lumps. And just give it a wipe to remove any dust. Here we go. Now I'm very new to spray paint, as you'll be able to see with my pretty weak application and how patchy it was coming onto the board. But I just kept going with it and added another colour for a subtle gradient effect. I did research how to do this and how to angle the can, but this was my first time, and as with all things, I definitely need some practice. But after a while, it was starting to look better and it was blending the way I wanted it to. Uh, was that a rookie using two hands? Yes. Yes, it was. You want to make sure you hold the can upside down and spray until it becomes clear. This cleans it out so that it doesn't get clogged. Back to the desk and I hit it with a layer of matte medium, which almost acts the same way gesso would. It just ensures that there's a layer there that paint and paint markers are going to be able to adhere to more easily. Nice. Once it was dry, it did feel a lot rougher than I thought, almost a bit spiky, so I decided to do something that I wouldn't recommend. But this is what this video is for, if anything, <laughs> it's to tell you how not to do things. I had decided on trying out a gloss varnish, thinking it would make it smoother, as I know I wanted to use Posca pens and smooth surfaces tend to fare well with them, but you'll see later on what happened with it and how it didn't really help. And after it was dry, the texture was pretty much the same, so it really wasn't the best move. But let's carry on and ignore that little mistake for now. It's time to clear up everything for the next step, which is to roughly plan out the idea. I take a photo on my iPad and draw on it, but I'll just talk to you properly later on about how that went. So I've drawn up some things on the iPad. I left it pretty open. I didn't um, spend too long on it. I just wanted to sort of draw something up to kind of get a rough idea of how I would draw it. I knew I wanted to draw a bird. I was kind of inspired by 
a piece I did recently and wanted to draw that across a skateboard. I thought it would look really good horizontal. So that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I was trying to do on the iPad, just kind of see how I would fit it across because it's a really narrow shape. So, but I'm just going to free freehand it and just sort of see how it goes as I'm drawing it. I'm not going to plan it too much. I'm going to use pencils, some acrylic paint and Posca pens mainly. I think for the line work, I'm just going to use Posca pens. So let's see, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm just going to have fun with it and not really plan it too much. So let's go. The first tool is a graphite pencil to mark up the rough lines. This helps. Once you're done with the line work, you're ready. The rest of the steps are literally just to get stuck in and make art. Line work time. I gotta say that, I mean, it's pretty obvious really that this is my favorite bit to do. Um, I know it's still creating when you're doing the background and varnishing and sanding like that that is still creating that is still part of it it's part of what it is to make this type of art but this is the art art bit this is the bit where you're just getting stuck in and enjoying it and just watching it grow and develop as you go and making it up as you go is my favorite thing to do you know and I, I liked that with this one I didn't have a massive plan apart from how the bird was gonna kind of fit and how it was gonna kind of look um, but it definitely left space for adding things that I wasn't expecting but yeah it's cool it's fun and um, if you're watching this and trying to find out how to do a skateboard and just want to see how other people have done it I know that's what I did I know that's how I got my research done on this um, it's so fun to watch other people do stuff and I can only hope that this helps inspire and helps you feel confident to do your own Apart from the rough shape and placement, I just improvised the details as I went, seeing what works best and building on it until it felt right. I found a brush tip Posca pen, which was pretty good for second coating over the white and lightly applying the paint softly. I went over the big black parts with matte medium again because this is where the gloss paint had tripped me up because the paint was cracking slightly and you could only really see it wherever the black Posca pen was so applying this and letting it dry before a second coat of Posca ensured that it would stay smooth and solid and not have any cracks in between.
My top tip is to then spray it with a varnish instead of brushing anything on as the paint from the Posca can smudge and ruin your artwork. This way the spray coats the work evenly and seals everything up. And then after that's dry, that really frees you up to apply any varnish or resin or anything else that you want without worrying about it bleeding or being smudged. That's it for this video, but as you can see, I did resin this skateboard, and if you want to see that, then check out the links to Dickies. This skateboard was part of a series of how-to videos I made for them, one of which was how to resin a skateboard, and this was said skateboard. I'd love to know your thoughts on this piece, so please comment below, and all that's left to say is a massive thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.